What do you think when you hear the topics secondary market, secondary equity in Europe growing market? Probably you will say, ah, I know what she wants. She wants to talk about the caller capital barometer. And you're right. I'm very happy to welcome Remco Hexman. He is partner in the investor relations and fundraising team of Collar Capital. And he is the perfect expert to talk about the barometer and the very interesting topic of GP Let's. So stay tuned. Let's talk about the Caller Capital Barometer and none other than Rempo Hexman is the perfect person to discuss this. I'm very happy. It's a pleasure for me to welcome you. Remco, you are partner at the investors and fundraising team of uh, Caller Capital and we are very happy to have you with us. You publish the barometer twice a year. It's a kind of trend indicator of the secondary market, isn't it? That's right, yes. Hi. Um, thanks for, uh, for having me on today. Um, that's right. The barometer is a survey that we take among investors in the private equity community. Um, it's something that we've been doing for the last um, 15 years. Um, when we ask in the last edition, for example, over 110 investors, um, for their experiences in private equity. And it's a globally representative uh, investor base, so it's diversified by location, by type of organization, by experience. And it's a perfect way for us to take the temperature of the industry and understand what investors are thinking about the key issues. Yeah, it's a good expression, the temperature of the market. So regarding the trends and the topics of your survey, could you give us an outlook um, over 2021 and beyond? Yes, of course, 2020 was a strange year. Um, we had before three years of record growth in the secondary market. Um, and then, of course, because of COVID, the market came to a complete standstill in 2020. Lots of uncertainty happened in the market, exit processes got cancelled, um, but we saw a very strong rebound um, in the second half of the year. And the second half of the year was almost as big as the second half of 2019. So we ended 2020 um, at, a, at a similar run rate as the year before. And so we very much expect the, uh, the growth trajectory to resume um, the speed and the level of pre-COVID. Um, and we're already seeing that in our pipeline as well. Um, we've never been busier. There's so many deals coming to us in the market. And I think what has helped is that um, the market has shown very robust and flexible in a crisis. So that's going to help the market going forward. And it's also borne out by what, by what respondents in the barometer have told us. So almost half of investors expect to utilize the secondary market um, either as a buyer or as a seller uh, in the next couple of years. And so that's half the participants in the market um, that, that think they will use uh, the secondary market. Um, you know, in recent years, the market has doubled every couple of years, and we see no reason why that would stop. And so a $200 million market is very much possible in the next couple of years. So, uh, so your outlook is more or less uh, positive? Very much so when it's, uh, when it's in relation to the size and the growth of the market. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. And um, let's talk about the GP led secondary. So can you, can you tell us a bit more about this, this, uh, this kind of, 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 of topic? So it looks like a, like a rapidly growing market. Is that so? Yes, that, that's very much the case. So GP Let's is a part of the market that, that has seen very strong growth in recent years. And it's really been the GP Let side of things that, that, uh, that led the recovery in 2020. So the GP Let's were the first to, uh, uh, to recover as strongly in, let's say, the third quarter of, uh, of 2020. And then the more traditional LP portfolios we saw come in the fourth quarter of the year. Um, just to get some numbers around how you know how how big the GP led space is, um, before COVID, about a third of the market was GP led, and by the end of 2020, 
about half of the market was represented by GP-led situations. So it's very much GP-leds that have driven the recovery, and we think GP-leds will continue to drive growth in the secondary market. And uh, were transact transactions in this segment um, affected uh, by by the pandemic, and if so, how? They were very much so. And if you think about what a GP-led situation is, you know, where a secondary buyer is buying assets from a private equity fund or from a general partner, uh, and he does that in close cooperation with the GP, who will continue to manage those assets uh, for the buyer, um, they're very different from a traditional fund portfolio where the secondary buyer buys a stake in uh, a private equity fund. And so they're much more concentrated. Um, they're usually you know, five to ten companies. Sometimes there's only one company. And so when uh, the crisis um, uh, had hit and we were at the bottom of it, for GPs, it was a little bit easier to identify portfolios that worked in the context of a sale. So if you only have five companies, it's much easier to identify companies that maybe are not hit so badly by COVID. And so that's one of the reasons why GPLS um, took off much sooner than the traditional Uh, side of the business. And also, GPs tend to be slightly better set up um, to run these transactions. So for LPs, um, they tend to be slightly uh, less well set up to run transactions. They are less transaction driven. Um, and so the GP led space, uh, just by its nature, um, was, was always more likely to, uh, to recover uh, quickly from the crisis. So because there is more flexibility, obviously. Yes, in particular with regards to identifying the portfolio that you're going to transact mm. on. And what are the main motivations uh, behind an investor's motivation to sell in the secondary market? You mentioned yeah, it a little bit before, but to go a bit deeper into the theme. You know, it's always an interesting question. Um, well, in our experience, a decision to sell is 99% of the time a reflection of the situation of the seller. It's usually not anything to do with what they're actually selling. And so we always ask about this in our barometer. Um, and in the last edition, 85% of respondents are saying the reason to uh, to consider a sale in the secondary market is to refocus uh, their resources on the best general partners. So that's 85%. A similar number of people say it's to increase liquidity, which always in a situation of crisis is an important reason, of course. And then... The next reason that people quote, 77% of respondents, is about uh, rebalancing the portfolio between types of private equity. So maybe rebalancing from venture to buyout or the other way around. 61% say it's about looking in returns to date. And 47% talk about redirecting assets or, or capital to other, uh, to other asset classes. And then the last reason that was given was given by about a third of respondents, and that's to do with reducing volatility. So there's a wide range of reasons that people quote. Yeah, that sounds very interesting. Interesting sounds also what you said. You said a growing market is good for everyone and that there's also in Germany a growing appetite. Can you explain that a bit clearer? Yeah, so I think a functioning and deep secondary market just gives investors optionality. It's much better to have the option to exit than to not have it. And this really should help the primary market as well. And especially in the case of GP less, this is liquidity that wasn't here before. Um, and so you know, both from the selling and the investing side, we've seen a lot of activ uh, activity in, uh, in Germany. Personally, I've been involved in our fundraising. Um, and there has been a lot of interest in the secondary market from pension funds, private banks, insurers. Um, and I personally think that's driven by a superior risk return characteristic in the secondary asset class. So summarizing in three sentences, how would you characterize the caller capital barometer and the GP led secondary market? Yeah. So you know, the barometer suggests very strong growth in the secondary market. And this Growth will largely be driven by GP LEDs, which is an emerging, emerging segment that has clear advantages to all market participants. And we are very excited about this, as this is expected to provide great uh, return, uh, investment opportunities for us. Remco, Remco Hexman from Cola Capital, your partner at the fundraising and investors team. Thank you very much for 
for being with us today and for give us your expertise in the in to the color capital barometer and your analysis so that was very interesting thank you very much pleasure thank you for having me